All right, guys, welcome back. So here is the iPhone XR review. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. So I've actually been testing out the XR since the day it was released to the public. And I gotta say, I've been really impressed by this phone, not only for the color options that are available, but also the different features and whatever is coming out of the box with this phone. When you're comparing the XR to the XS and the XX Max, the XR is actually the budget-friendly line of the iPhone. It starts at 749 for the 64 gigabyte version, and it goes all the way up to 899 for the 256 gigabyte version. Now, if you're sick and tired of just two choices for your phone, either the silver, the spray gray, or even the rose gold option, you're gonna be pretty happy to know the XR has six color options available for you to choose from. Personally, I went for the product red version because that's the only product from the XR line that actually donates a portion of the sales to the HIV and AIDS research. Now, in order to keep the price point down and keep the XR below the thousand level mark, Apple had to make some sacrifices in some of the key components of the phone. The most obvious one will be the screen of the phone. It's not an OLED screen found on the XS or the XS Max. The XR actually has an LCD screen. The reason why Apple decided to go with the LCD panel it's a little bit cheaper than the OLED counterparts. And the reason why Apple decided to go with the LCD panels compared to the OLED, it's simply because of the price factor. Had they gone with the OLED panels for this phone, the price would have been a little bit higher, I think probably the same amount as the XS. Now when it comes down to the display of the phone, the XR has a beautiful screen. It's 6.1 inch screen, which is actually bigger than last year's iPhone 10 model. And I must say the product red color found on this series has been really good. It's bright and colorful. So gone are the days of touch and traditional home screen buttons. The touch ID in the home screen button now has been replaced with Apple's latest technology, which is called Face ID. It was first pushed out on the iPhone 10, and I've actually been using it since the iPhone 10 was launched and I must say it's actually really good and the only times I've had problems using face ID would have to be when I'm wearing sunglasses because my sunglasses are polarized so the sensors can detect my eyes when I try to unlock the phone therefore I need to put in my password now the face ID found on this phone is actually the second generation when compared to the first generation found on the iPhone 10. The second generation is actually much faster when unlocking the phone and approving payments. And what I've actually found is I was able to unlock my phone a little bit further away than my 10. Now, instead of having that home button at the bottom of your phone, you're actually given just a little bar at the bottom, which comes with a whole different range of gestures to use when you're unlocking the phone, switching between apps, or even closing an app. Now, if you are going to be coming from a Touch ID device, the new gestures will be a little bit of a learning curve, but I promise you, after you've used them for a while, you'll get used to them and they'll become second nature to you. Unlike the dual camera system found on the 10s and the 10s Max, the 10R actually has one single camera. It's a 12 megapixel f 1.2 wide angle camera. Now before you write this camera off, do keep in mind this camera is absolutely amazing and it takes great photos and you can now record up to 4K 60 frames per second and using this camera. Or if you prefer super smooth videos, you can record up to 240 frames per second at 1080p. Now, if you are gonna be creating content such as taking pictures, videos, recording super smooth videos, I highly recommend that you go for the versions that are the 256 or the 128 gigabyte version solely because the files do quickly add up and they will fill up your phone really fast. Now the great thing with this lineup of the iPhone, you get portrait mode for the front camera as well as the rear camera. For the front camera, it's a seven megapixel F2.2 true depth camera with an all new video stabilization feature. You can also get portrait mode from the front facing camera, allowing you to take amazing portraits with this phone. Now where this phone truly shines will have to be what's inside of the phone. It's actually rocking the A12 Bionic chip found on the 10s as well as the 10s Max. And what that translates into, it's gonna be able to handle any app you throw at it, able to multitask, as well as the launching of the apps are gonna be super fast and super smooth. Faster loading of the phone, as well as the overall launching of the apps can be very fast. So yes, we are at the notch stage of the phone. The 10R actually has the same type of notch that the 10s and the 10s Max have. Now the notch is not only used to house not only front-facing camera, but also the equipment required to make the face ID work properly, which includes the infrared camera, the flood illuminator, and the dot projector. The next thing that's gone that I really hate 
about the 10R and I'm going to miss a lot will be the feature called Force Touch that's found on the 10, 10S and the 10S Max. So the Force Touch in a nutshell is a technology developed by Apple where the screen and the sensors are able to distinguish levels of force and as a result they enable different options such as shortcuts from an app to moving between text while typing. Force Touch for me has really been helpful when I'm trying to open up shortcuts to any apps to navigating through text. Now the next biggest change for the 10R, and I personally feel it's a double-edged sword, will have to be the back of the phone. It's no longer an aluminum back, but it's actually a glass back that's found on the phone. Now the biggest benefit of having glass back on the phone is you get wireless charging. Keep in mind that there is no wireless charger in the box. You have to buy the accessory separately. But anyways, at the same time, you're more likely to crack the back of the phone as glass is not as strong as aluminum. Now on to the bad part of having a glass back of the phone. You kind of have to go with Apple Care right when you buy the phone. Pairs done out of Apple Care are $399 for any other damages. For that reason, I highly recommend that you purchase Apple Care Plus with this phone. Now, on to the performance of the phone. Everything has been quick and snappy because of the A12 processor, and anything that I've thrown at the phone has been handled with ease. So, in conclusion, the 10R has a lot of parts missing that are found in the traditional. 10s and the 10s max line but at the same time it's a wonderful phone for what's inside of the device such as the processor the features found the camera as well as the size of the screen i hope you guys enjoyed watching this review if you did hit that like button and subscribe to the youtube channel let me know what your thoughts are about the 10r as always thank you for watching i'll catch you in the next one goodbye